part of our introducing series and we're talking to some amazing artists that we know you should. If you've not already followed them, you're not already hooked up with them, we believe you should be aware of them. So on today's show, I'm going to let him introduce himself. Um, tell everybody who you are and what the band's called. All right, my name is Paul. I'm a lead singer and guitarist in Three Little Wolves. Excellent, excellent. And we're going to play some music. We always start, I always start off with a video or some music at the start. So we'll we'll play some in a minute just to get everyone warmed up. And if you're on Mixcloud or you're anywhere, please share the broadcast. If you're watching on YouTube, uh, there'll be a blog from this and, and what have you. But get behind the band, go and find them and see what they're all about. So I, I read, we'll play a track in a minute, but I read, it was, what's you say? You're a scouse. Oh, God. I've, oh, it's annoying me that now because you say, <laughs> you say something like you're a... It, and it's, it's an interesting one, actually, and I read it out today, and, I, and I've forgotten it again, but it's quite an interesting statement. What is it? Indie rock and stuff formed in, formed in a Scouse psychedelic stew, stew and fused with some West Midlands indie. Interesting. So you Scouse and moved to the Midlands, basically. Yeah, that's it, man, yeah. I mean, the rest of the band, the um, rest of the band born and bred around here, but, like, very much um, born and bred Liverpool, but living living here for quite a while now, so I suppose it's about time to associate myself with the locals, do you know what I mean? <laughs> be, be careful, mate, some of them aren't friendly. <laughs> 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 well, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll go to a track and then we'll check if anyone's... If you want to comment on the feed, please drop a question in. We'll be asking them some questions, find out what they're doing, where they're at, where they're touring, etc., etc. But everything we do have some, we have had some crazy questions. But we'll start off with this. Uh, whilst this is playing, we'll be off screen, so you don't have to worry about that. It's Three Little Wolves, and this is a track called "Need You More." So here we go. Check it out. Check them out, people. Cool. 
wonderful. Nice track to start off with. Need you more by Three Little Wolves. If you just joined us, we're, uh, we're speaking to Three Little Wolves, funnily enough. So there you go. Yeah, nice track, man. Like it. Like Thanks it. Very much. Like yeah. it. So what made you move from uh, from Liverpool down to the Midlands then? Uh, as people often move, women, really. <laughs> kind of like met a woman, um, kind of moved down here to be with her. Um, that didn't really work out, but then ended up sticking around for, well, a long time I've been here now. Kind of, I'm always getting to the point in my life where I've been longer in Birmingham than Liverpool, which is a bit of a identity crisis, you know, to say the least. Yeah, mate, I'm the same. I left uh, from obviously from Manchester. I left uh, when I was 32, so uh, yeah, I've got a few more years yet. But I've not lived there since. <laughs> I've not lived there since 1999. I've been all over the place: Holland, Yorkshire, Midlands. So I live in the Midlands now, like yourself. My wife's from uh, just outside Liverpool, so there you go. So uh, yeah, there's a lot of us about in there. Scouts and Manx are all over the place. Seem to be a lot of, lot of us in the industry as well. So what got you into um, music then, performing? Oh, just forever in it you know i think it's kind of in your blood in it i mean especially grow, growing up liverpool northwest sort of way like you say there's a lot in the industry but i just think it's totally in your blood you know i mean my mum and dad grew up with the beatles you know and you, you just can't you can't be in a household that grows up with like the beatles and then got played stuff like the beach boys and things like that when i was a kid growing up and you know that's going to have a massive influence on you in it um yeah. and i guess kind of i was at the right sort of time when kind of brick pop came round and I was like, you know what, this 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 is really, really different to like, I don't know, stuff that had gone before. Um and just it was just guitar music all the way really for me since then. And yeah. then started to write songs and yeah, I just think it's a bit of a I think it's something that you you feel like you're born to do, you know, whether it yeah. without it sounding too pretentious, do you know what I mean? I think once you've kind of realised you can write songs, it's just all you kind of want to do, you know what I mean? I think it's quite a nice um, expression of creativity. Like, I've got mates who, like, um, talented guys who, like, write scripts and novels and stuff like that, um, and that's brilliant, but mm. it takes you months and months and months to refine that. You know, the idea of knocking out a song in three minutes, 20 minutes, whatever, it's, um, yeah, it's nice and makes you feel like you can be prolific and play around with different styles and stuff. So, yeah, yeah. just being into music forever and ever, really. Yeah, I mean, it does make sense. I mean, I can't, I love music. I've always liked music, and I grew up in a household that was playing all the latest stuff, some great music, and you do get influenced by it. And uh, I've always watched to do this sort of stuff from being young. And yeah, if if it's destined to do something, it's it's this sort of stuff. And I adore speaking to people, getting them to understand them a bit more. Uh, and especially if it's music related, that, well, it's even better. Isn't it? And that's why we're doing these these uh, these interviews, these introducing because we believe there's some very talented uh, artists out there, you guys included. Who should, who should we we want people to sort of investigate and check out and I think interviewing someone is a great way for people to sort of go yeah these are interesting let's find a bit bit more what's the music like what they're about what they're doing so uh, so who influenced you then music wise is it is it always the Beatles the Beach Boys all the classics or is it always yeah it that's always... kind of when I was a kid really but kind of like like I say the whole kind of Brit pop stuff just kind of hit me square in the face really so you know you're talking kind of um stone roses oasis um yeah radiohead love radiohead um and then kind of i suppose um at, at the time as well it was kind of like the cream super club thing going on in liverpool so like quite a lot of dance music and stuff like that so that's why this kind of i think our stuff's got quite a bit of variety to it you know i mean even the stuff that we've brought out is kind of you've got acoustic songs you've got your standard indie guitar stuff um you've got stuff that sounds a bit dancier and i quite like that you know yeah people, people often say you know you can't you know our band can't go in a pigeonhole a lot of people in bands say that but like i genuinely believe that with us really and i think that's quite a nice place to be really yeah, because one of the tracks going to I've got like because they even ask you which tracks you were playing. I've just I've just gone for it. Uh, is, the, <laughs> is is the collaboration you've done with Sean Buckley who's from Salford? So from uh, from yeah. my neck of the woods. So we'll play that in a bit. But that that's something we'll get we'll get going. Oh, we've got a question here. Eddie, one of our presenters, um, always asks this: Have you got a tour van? Is it a transit van? I don't know why. He's just obsessed with it. I don't know what it is. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, do you know what? We do we do speak to bands who say, yeah, we got a van. Sometimes we sleep in the van. And I'm just like, do you know what? I just I just can't be doing with that, man. I can't be doing with that. All the hot and sweaty bodies next to each other. No, we just um, <laughs> we, we travel separately. Luxurious, though, that appears. Do you know what I mean? It's not private jet, but like I think your own car's perhaps not too much to ask. You know? We can't stand each other, so we all go out in our own car. <laughs> Sweaty bodies. In some places, people pay for that. See? Yeah, they do. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah they that's, do. So some people, that's a n- nice night out. Sweaty bodies yeah. all around them. But there you go. I, I get you. I understand you. It's like uh, it's a bit like we'd ride motorcycles with people. Oh, you always camping? Like, no, we did Europe and we just went, we went in hotels. One of them was a five-star hotel that she got cheap because it, <laughs> it was out of season. It's like it, unbelievable. Butlers and everything. I was like, how much does this cost us? Oh, it was only 80 quid. Got it cheap. Crazy, yeah. yeah. Oh, the Mad Phoenix is on. Uh, she's in she's in Madeira, part of our street team. Trace is on. Shared the stream. Thank you very much. Sharing is caring. Drop your questions in, people. I'm going to ask you. I'm going to start off with a question that I asked the last uh, the last guys, and it was a bit of a. You don't have to answer if you don't want. Room 101. What band would you put in Room 101? Now, if you want time to think about, it, we can play a track and come back to it. Uh, or if you don't want to answer it, you don't have to answer it. So just. Uh, just an off the cuff question that I've started throwing out there. So yeah, okay. it could be a bit dangerous, really. You, d- you don't have to answer it, it's, it's fine, but you know. No, I don't mind answering it. I mean, you know, you've got your standard targets like your cold plays and your Ed Sheerans and people like that who are just like, just there to be shot at, in my opinion, you know. Um, oh, I don't know. Probably wouldn't be thanked very much for this by like sections of the indie community, but stereophonics right, don't okay. really get it to be honest. Yeah. Some people love them, I think they're very, very okay. Do you know, <laughs> but, you know I like they... that very, very okay. Very, very okay. <laughs> very... People, are, people are probably unfollowing me as we're speaking. Like, <laughs> no, you know it, doesn't, I mean? it doesn't matter, them things, it? it doesn't matter. People lose their mind when I go, I, I, I don't even really, really get Bowie. Do you know what I mean? I sort of understand him, but I don't, you know, I wouldn't put him on. It's not one of me out, and people go, How dare you? Well. Yeah. We don't all have to like the same <laughs> thing, do we? Do you know what I mean? It's uh, yeah, it's, it's crazy. Man. So how many's in the band then? Is it how many of you is in the band? Well, there's there's three of us in the band. Um, so like I do uh, vocals and guitar. Then we've got Kareen who plays keyboard and samples, and then we've got Dale who plays bass. Um, and we're kind of playing around potentially with a fourth member at the minute. Um, but yeah, just seeing how that goes. So exciting times, hopefully. You'll have to change your name to Four Little Wolves then. I know. That's what people have said, but it's got to mm. stay, hasn't it? It's got to stay. Can't just keep expanding <laughs> if the band expands, can we? Three Little I Wolves and made a bit of a, Plus. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we've made a bit of a, a cross for our own back there a no. while back. <laughs> Well, no, yes and no. It depends how how you how you how you how you come up with the name, doesn't it? It doesn't really matter, does it? The name's a name, and people know that. What? Where does that come from? The three little wolves. Obviously, it's three band members. What yeah, is... well, there's there's three of us, like, um, but it's just that kind of um, that thing with like the 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 darkness of children's fairy tales and stuff, really, because it's like it's obviously it's a bit of a play on the three little pigs, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and I always like those kind of dark, grim fairy tales where, like, kind of like there was a lot of suffering and death in them, you know, like Hansel and Gretel pushing the witch into the oven and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> and you know, it just tossed off like it's a nice little tale for kiddies. <laughs> I always like the darkness of that, you know. know it's um, mental, isn't it? It's, 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 it's like the, well, it's like the uh, three bears, isn't it? And the, yeah, you know, like, and what's the other one with the big wolf? The wolf that um, oh, what's she called? Someone else tells her. Yeah, it. the three little pigs, and like the wolf eats the grandma, and then all right, and then the woodcutter comes in and cuts off his head, and then it's like <laughs> have a good night's sleep. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Don't have nightmares about being beheaded or being eaten by a wolf. It's fine. So, yeah, you know, that's that's dark. I've always found quite fascinating. It's a a bit like the cartoons back in the day. Tom and Jerry smashing each other up. Anvil's coming down and all that sort of stuff. Like, people people lose their minds now over the slightest thing. We we put up with that. That's what we grew up with. Violence. Massive red bumps coming out of their heads and glowing and stuff. It's ace, isn't it? I've got a question here from Richard Oliver from Oliver's Army. 
likes his indie. Oliver's Army. Good afternoon. Oh, good. he's very polite. Too polite for us. Could he ask the sort of, what sort of music was played at home when growing up? He's answered that, but we'll ask him again. And uh, was that on a family stereo or in your own bedroom? And he's gone even specific now, vinyl, CD, MP3. So I think there's probably a transition. There's probably a couple of questions there, isn't there? Yeah. Yes. I mean, kind of, in terms of, like, I suppose, shared listening experiences, it kind of, it changes a little bit as you get older, doesn't it, inevitably? So, you know, you're a kid. Like, one, one of the first songs I ever remember um, on the radio was... Um, um, I get around by the Beach Boys, oh, yeah. and I guess it would have been about five or six then. And and even then, I, I was just like, "What is this? Do you know what I mean? What is this?" It, it was just like a bit of a an alarm call, really, because yeah. um, it's just so immediate. Their stuff's just so immediate, like. So I suppose when you're that sort of age, it's listening to the stuff that your parents listen to, isn't it? You know. Yeah. Um, but then obviously, as you get older, you become a teenager, you want your own independence and like you're regressing into your bedroom, aren't you? You know, yeah. so, um, Done that. so yeah, like, in terms of mediums, like it's like my dad always had like an old kind of vinyl record player, like, um, or it was like stuff on the radio, you know, Um and then kind of like, yeah, like I say, listening to listening to music in your bedroom and then you start to develop the sort of stuff that you're into. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And you can't you can't separate it from the influences of your parents. But then I suppose if you're like 14 and you're angry, then you might listen to some stuff like that, mightn't you? Yeah. You know, and kind of like you're rebellious and you want to kill the world and stuff. But then maybe you get a little bit older and you want to listen to stuff that's a bit more mellow, but there's still a bit of room for that angry stuff. And I think you're just broadening your taste all the time, aren't you? Yeah. Like even now, you know, we're all like massive, massive music fans. And I, I, I'm i kind of just devouring everything that's out there. Mm. And it's just so easy to get hold of these days, you know? So yeah. I think um, I think you're always, uh, always developing um, what you're into all the time, really. I'm just looking for stuff that's new and sounds new even to, to this day, really. Yeah. I think you're right. I think I think for some people that's the case, but all too often I see a lot of people that that um, they stuck. They get stuck in a certain place. Yeah. And that, yeah, people, some people frustrate the crap out of me. I get in the car and it's the same. I don't want you listen to this again. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. I'm like, we're like yourselves. We that's why we set the station up and focused on emerging artists and new music because you can listen to something now. I I still want that. You mentioned a couple of one. You mentioned the the Beach Boys, and it grabbed you. You know, I listened to. I was around at my mates, and my mates, my mates, older brother, a couple of years older, was listening to the Jam, and I was like, "What? Yeah. Is, what is this?" And I got into the Jam through that, and then UB40 and all that sort of stuff. And uh, I, I, I want we what we've. I think once you've had that buzz, that initial buzz when you was young, I think you want to try and get it again. And uh, the, yeah. the the stuff out there now that we put on, you go. This is awesome. Some tracks you have to you have to listen to and really, you know, give them a few plays, and you think, yeah, I'm not sure, and then it gets you. And then on other ones, you as soon as that first note hits, you go, wow, I like this. It's just, yeah. And it's, there's still lots of it out there. Lots of great, great music to listen to. Is anyone hey, keep adding your questions? Uh, Janice is asking, what's your creative process? So who does the writing, and then how, how does that all work? Um, so often, um it'll be, I might just come up with something on an acoustic and then we'll flesh it out. Um, but then sometimes it can just go the other way and just be kind of like um, jamming in the practice room sort of thing, you know. So it's kind of, it it, it comes from different angles. Um, I normally put lyrics on last because, like, I find it hard work, man. You know, <laughs> yeah. for me, I'm kind of like, I'm far more about pretentious though this sounds how the music sounds and the moods do you know what i mean and like we'll tend to create something that's got a sound or a feel and then i'm like okay what's this about do you know what i mean what could this be about and then you're almost ba basically trying to tell a story to fit <laughs> but songwriters work in massively different ways yeah. some of them are pure poets aren't they you know and they'll sit and write some poetry and put it to music but for us it's kind of the other way around really but yeah in terms of the writing process um 
it, it can come from any angle and that's really good and even these days with technology like you know it's like dale sent across a, a couple of bass bits the other week and he was like you know what i was messing about just doing a bit of recording here's a few bass lines what do you reckon and i was like you know what that one's really good we could do something with that so kind of it's it's almost like you don't have to be in the same room these days do you with no. technology no. and you could just work on ideas um separately and then bring them together and that's um that's quite organic as well i like that yeah, yeah. There's a, there's quite a few people I know, and especially with the recent uh, COVID and what have you, where they 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 done everything remote and they've and they've yeah. put full albums together and loads. Yeah, it's really interesting, it's, and it's 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 nice to understand because different bands do different things. Some create the music and send it to someone, or they go, oh, here's some lyrics, and they go, oh yeah, let's put a tune to that. It's it's interesting how different people do it. There's no right and wrong way. Some people prefer uh... the, the sound and then add the lyrics to it, or some people do the lyrics and then fire it over to someone who does the music and go, yeah, put some put a tune to this. Uh, so it's it's quite interesting to understand how each people each you know group works. So you you said earlier on that there's a the, you've obviously you you're in you've got a different sound and you, uh, I'd like to understand the thing with Sean Buckley. So you've, you've teamed up with Sean Buckley and uh, we'll play this track in a minute. Um, so what what brought that about? Because obviously he's he's a mank as well. And you're a scouse. What's, what's, what's all that about? What's all that about? I have to say, right, I worked in Manchester for a couple of years, um, well, years ago, um, and they used to um, they used to have an organisation there called SWIM, which stood for Scousers Working in Manchester. <laughs> now, three, I never three, went, three, right? three, I never member, went, three but, members. <laughs> yeah, 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 I never went, but I would imagine it, it would be a load of Scousers that beat up in a pub in Manchester and just slag off Manx, I would imagine. Probably, but, yeah, probably. You know, just despite that, like, no, I really enjoyed working there, man. It's a good city. Obviously, we've got the rivalry and all that, but, you know. Um, but, yeah, how that came about was just, like, one of those kind of miracles of Twitter, really. Like, because, you know, Sean, as you know, he's, like, a massive collaborator. He's always looking to work with other people. Mm. Um, and he just threw something out one night. Um, we just happened to see the message saying, um, does anyone fancy taking on this track um, that he that he's got an old album on Spotify? And, like I say, it's... it's it was a chance for us to do something different in terms of kind of like, well, that's it's a techno track, really. Do you know what I mean? And I thought, well, we've never done that before. We've never taken someone else's song in a different genre and tried to kind of twist it into one of our sort of things. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, that's how it came about, just pure chance on Twitter. He sent us the song stems. We messed about with it, um, stuck a bit of vocal on the top, a few extra keyboards, and uh, yeah, dead pleased with the way it turned out, actually. All right, well, 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 now you've built it up, we'll play it. See if you like this, people. It's a techno vibe done in a Scouse psychedelic stew. Some of that, anyway. I remembered it. <laughs> Have a listen to this.
We're all coming loose. We're all coming loose. We're all coming loose. We're all coming down to the dance floor. Now that's very different people. If you just joined us, talking to Three Little Wolves. And that's a collaboration with Sean Buckley, Salford producer. Uh, someone said it's got it's got a a feel of OMD. Mm, there you go. There you go. Wonderful. Should be back in the room now. You there? Yeah. Yeah. Sound. Uh, yeah. I like that. We like that. It's like I say, totally different, isn't it? It's not indie. It's like I say, it's got a great beat to it. So, uh, yeah, lovely. So, yeah, that's Rigid Oil. Like this. Definitely echoes of OMD in this. Yeah, I, I see what you're saying there. Yeah. So, um, someone's asked, what's the most memorable place that you've performed? Uh, well, um, just before... Well, it was, yeah, it was about October time. Um, we played a gig in Glasgow. It was the first time we've ever played kind of like outside... Um, England really so it's like crossing that Scottish border is a bit like a bit of a moment you know what I mean mm. um, and yeah kind of like thinking well we will headline that night so it's like an English band headlining in Scotland we're like you know what we're gonna get bottles but it was fine it was fine you know kind of a uh, no I met some really nice people at that um, but yeah that was um, that was a different experience we'll take that as playing in another country do you know what I mean yeah well so, it, is, uh, it is really yeah isn't it? that was definitely memorable <laughs> Excellent, like that. So oh, here we go. Brookside keeps coming to mind. Uh, Tracy's Red Tracy's said. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Why is that? Because of his, his accent. His accent. Uh, Mad Phoenix, Brum bass with a scout soul, definitely up your alley. At Jack. yes, yes, definitely. So there's people commenting in between the cells here about it. So, uh, so where, so are the rest of the band from the Midlands, or are they where they come from? Yeah, they're they're both from the Midlands. So um, Dale's from Birmingham. And Kareem's from like the black country. Oh. Don't know how much you know about that. I'm um, yeah. I'm um, like... yeah. I'm um, yeah. Yeah. I'm um, yeah. Black pay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Precisely. Great they don't pace. like to be confused. Do you know what I mean? Ooh, a no. bit like the American Canadian thing. They don't like that at all. So oh. I've got to be very specific about that. Yeah, you have. I, I worked in uh, Wolverhampton for 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 a bit on a bit of a project, oh, yeah. and that that was interesting. I'm um, yeah, and a lot about grey pays. And I'm like, what were you talking about? Yeah, gonna go and have some grey pays. What what's grey pays? <laughs> Great peas, yeah. whatever they are, whoever invented them. I have no idea, but they seem to like them. Uh, <laughs> can someone else translate this for the Brazilian, please? What do you mean, translate what? What, the great peas? No idea. Anyway, there's loads of chat going on on the, on the mixed cloud <laughs> feed. Have you got any gigs booked? And what have you got planned at the minute? Yeah, so, um, like I said earlier, we, we're kind of working with a potentially a new guitarist at the moment. Um, some guy who kind of got in touch came along to one of our gigs and kind of like said, do you fancy another guitarist? Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's a lot for me to do, really, because <laughs> it's like kind of, I'm the only guitarist, so it's like rhythm, lead, vocal. And I've always thought we probably need somebody else just to kind of expand the sound out a little bit. Um, so, yeah, we're going to do a bit of work with them in the next couple of weeks. So we've got our next, because... I think we're, we're going to take a bit of a break during March, really, just to kind of bed it in a little bit, you know, um, mm. unless we get something incredibly amazing offered to us in March. Um, so our next gig's uh, middle of April. Uh, so we, we've got mates. You get kind of like gig buddies in this game. Like, it's quite nice. So we've got mates with this um, other band. For, they're from Wolverhampton. They're called Smoking Eskimo. Um, right. And we played, played a couple of times with them. Um, round and about the Midlands. So we played with them in Birmingham um, about three weeks ago. Um, and then we're playing back up for a return leg in Wolverhampton. Um, and I think that's 16th of April. Um, I'll have to look up the place. Uh, it's called the Gifford, the Gifford in Wolverhampton. Right. Um, so we're playing with them. And then Perry Manning as well, who's just a great guy. Like, so we played with Perry as well a couple of weeks ago. And he's always up for a gig. Like, so we are, we're doing our return um, black country leg of our Birmingham gig, um, 16th of <laughs> April. So that's, that's a Saturday night. So it should be a good laugh in there. Um, but yeah, I want to take a bit of a break before then, I think, and just make sure we can um takes a bit of time to bed a new member in, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, uh, just yeah. kind of get the sound a bit right. And then um, yeah, after that, we've got um we're 
releasing our album hopefully kind of april may okay oh, cool. um, and then a couple of couple of like a little mini tour around that really so again a couple of um couple of dates coming up um so yeah exciting stuff yeah it is yeah someone asked that is the an album in the offing and obviously yeah you've just answered that question you must be you must be psyched into the questions it's great <laughs> it's wonderful and we've noticed we've noticed since we'd last um few months we've been looking at artists emerging artists and what they're doing and what we have noticed there's a real you said about gig buddies we've noticed a lot of emerging artists are all supporting each other one tweets something and there's loads of them all sharing it and saying oh we've got a gig going on which is really nice to see you know we it, there's there's lots of bands supporting each other you know we were talking to the shed project the, the other week and uh and we was amazed by how many other bands were promoting them even from ireland are promoting them and they're going oh yeah. get on these guys they're brilliant and you think that's it almost feels like there's a change in the industry from the uh, the underground the indie bands uh, uh, sort of look, you know building something which is which is cool well it's not a competition man that's the way i see it you know it's not a competition it's like would if if we really like stuff and they they're really good people as well then of course we're going to put their stuff forward you know we love the shed project and like they they seem to love us as well and that's that's just like one example you know we'll always big them up they'll big us up and everybody wins don't they yeah exactly you know? um, yeah and i think kind of when you when you meet people so you've got kind of like the virtual world of twitter where kind of like or whatever social media where everybody kind of inc it's the most positive environment virtual environment i've ever ever been involved in to be mm. honest you know people say twitter's toxic well no, i'm like well you're following the wrong people then to be quite frank you know what i mean unfollow them delete them take them out and start following people that are different and positive about each other and yeah. like kind of indie twitter is such a massive positive community you know yeah big in each other's gigs and releases and stuff and it's um yeah it's important and then you know you meet these people in the flesh and you're like um you Let's just do something together. Yeah, okay, sounds. And, you know, this kind of how this kind of um, smoking Eskimo Perry Manning thing came about. And we were like, do you know what? Should we just do, do a little return gig? Yeah, let's just do that. So, That's you know, good. these things just, uh, they grow quite organically. And I think mm. this kind of, I mean, the promoters are great, but this kind of like, this whole cutting out of the um, the A&R stage is quite a healthy thing, really. It's a very open marketplace these days. Anyone can put their music up any time, can't they? Yeah. You know, I think kind of like not having to like, um, I don't know, charm or bull crap your way around men in suits, you know, can only be a good thing, can't it? It feels yeah. very... Uh, feels very honest it does um, it does thing. i think it's a totally different movement and uh, you're right and it, it frustrates us when we see um that's you know we say that we don't play the same old crap you know the same old you know because it, there's nothing wrong with some of the big stars that are out there but you know give 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 someone some other a break just because it's just easy it's like for me it's lazy just to play the stuff that's out there or oh i know if i play this it's a big name and it, it, people are going to going to listen to it because it because it's it's a name that everyone knows it's wrong i think i think i think if you if you're in the industry whatever you're what whatever industry you're in you should always be looking for stuff that's out there that's going to excite people not just go to the otherwise we'd never move on with stuff would we and you're right no. about. I think you're right about Twitter. For me, it's become my favourite um, social media. And you're right. People go, "Oh, it's rubbish on TikTok, uh, Twitter." I'm thinking, well, "What? You, what you're following? Because I've not had any. Do you know what I mean? Totally. There's nothing on there. So you must, like, say, you must be following the wrong people, or you've interacted that way in the past. So Twitter thinks you like this crap. So I'm going to keep on giving it to you because that's what <laughs> yeah. that's what it does, doesn't it? So if yeah. you if it's you get Twitter algorithm, <laughs> yeah, you you like nonsense. So here's some more nonsense. You know, the only thing I don't like at Twitter is the what people are post on, and it frustrates me. I need new music. Drop your links here. That's just yeah. just stop that. Please. I just yeah. I block them. I just yeah. started blocking. I just can't be doing that rubbish. I, I need some attention, is what they actually mean. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what I say. I just put on. We know what you're after. Grow up. Pack it in. Um, yeah. Someone said, any particular band you love to play with? I know you've mentioned which, a few. I would love to play with what, yeah. like current bands. I think we should do that because you've already said which bands you like playing with. Yeah, which bands would you like to play? Which one would who would you like to tour with? Um, well, um, I really like kind of favourite sort of independent bands at the moment. Similar sort of um, 
arena. Um, I really like Dictator. I think they're amazing. Um, I really like Heavy North. In fact, go oh, to see the Heavy North yes. on Friday, they're which awesome. is going to be amazing in Birmingham. Sold out, aren't they? I really so, like Moonlight Parade as well. Just really, really cool bands. You know, they're kind of, um, yeah. I, I, I mean, like you know, most of the independent scene is brilliant, but I think those three bands are just—they're uh, just fantastic, man. You know, they're just like next level for me, really. Cool, uh, superb, wonderful. Right, we're gonna play a track. I should ask you. You tell me after this one what track you want me to play. So I've, I've played this today on my show. It's, it's Firebug by Three Little uh, Three Little Wolves. And have a think about this question for when we come back. Um, which song do you wish you'd have written or wrote, whichever? Have a think of that. I bet there's loads of them. This is Three Little Wolves on Dougie Stone Radio introducing. Go and follow them. Go and find them. Download the music. All the lovers in the playground song Save all the lovers in the playground Make you feel better Make you feel better Save all the lovers in the playground song Save all the lovers in the playground Make you feel better Make you feel better And my finals was a bad of me Every time you walk on by I nearly, it nearly caught me out that one then. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> just, well, just stop. You know, DJs have said that before. <laughs> like, oh, what happened then? I didn't expect it to finish quite so suddenly. Thought, You're welcome. <laughs> it's like, geez, it's got me then. I was like, I'm all right here. Another second, I'll click the button and then we'll bring the graphic up and boom. It's gone. gone. <laughs> what happened? Stops. <laughs> Anyway, just joined us, Three Little Wolves. We're having a bit of a natter about the band, and uh, thanks for thanks for finding us. Anyway, and thank anyway, not even thank you for coming on, but thanks for coming on. It's been wonderful talking to you so far. It's great. Uh, yeah, someone said talents being lost with the with the industry. Yeah, it is. But I think I think I think there's some there's some stuff, good stuff going to be coming out from from this. Uh, definitely at the at the uh, as as we go on. So. I asked you a question before we started. I'd give you a little bit of a, a oh, lovely voice, Tracy's saying. That's nice. Me or, or Free Little Wolves? <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, you care. Obviously, me. Oh, it's all about me. I only do these because <laughs> it's about me. It's not about anyone else. Uh, yeah. Which song would do you wish you'd have written? 
It's a yeah, tough, like, question, tough question, isn't it? I think it is it. a tough question, and I kind of like I pondered over loads, but actually this is kind of one that's, I don't know, quite impactful, I suppose. I, th I think the songs that you remember are the ones that have a bit of an emotional impact, yeah? Um, and I think this, this is not a Beatles song that gets chosen by many people, but I really like She's Leaving Home. Oh, I think that, man, tingles, tingles. You know what I mean? Oh, I love I mean? it. Yes. Yeah. That is so, a brilliant track. Brilliant. Yeah, it is a brilliant track, and it, you know, because it's... It's part of the canon of such a brilliant band, and it's on such a brilliant album. It gets overlooked a lot. No, no, but, it's, know, one, like, it's one of my the favorites. The poignancy of that, you know, and it's like, you know, like a lot of the songs were um, kind of written, inspired by things in the newspaper and stuff like that. But that's kind of like a story in a newspaper, runaway teenage girl, like, um, and it's just so poignant, you know, and kind of like telling the little story of like she's kind of slipping away she's leaving the note and mom and dad wake up and that mm, whole kind of yeah. daddy our baby's gone that gets you man don't it and you've got those strings zapping away in the background you know that that that's just got everything really a kind of tugging at the heart strings yeah. and you look at somebody like i don't know let's let's pick on adele for instance personally you took you look at <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, do you know what? That is just schmaltz, absolute schmaltz. When she's, you kind of compare it to something like that, and she said millions, she said millions of copies, and she had the audacity to go and say, "Don't let my album go on. Or it needs, it should be played in order. I've not spent all this time, Jesus, yeah. Adele. But let people choose what. But that track you mentioned, as soon as you mentioned, it, I got tingled because I remember. Yeah first listening to that and listening to the words and it paints the picture and it's you're right it's so heart-wrenching isn't it it's yeah. and that is what is amazing about music in it if you think about it, music is is poetry and it is it tells if you can tell a story and you and evoke emotion yeah. yeah sometimes we just want to sit there and have some dirge in the background just keeping us yeah over, it's healthy. you know yeah. but that songs like that. I mean, for me, I think one of the, my one of my all time favorite, which is not my all time favorite tracks, but you, you're talking to Beatles again, talking John Lennon, and I think that's Imagine. I think just think that track yeah. is just still today. It 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 we've not. Do you know what I mean? Still today, it makes sense. You, it it it's the story is still relevant now as it was when he wrote it 50 years ago, whatever it is. Crazy. I mean, we've been talking about the Beatles again. They're not even <laughs> they're not even paying us any money, the Beatles, and we're always promoting them, because last week we natted about the Beatles for ages. Really we did, yeah, we did. We did. I was really, yeah. really surprised. I don't think they need the publicity, Kirk, do you know what I mean? They I don't. think they're doing it right. Well, I think to, between you and Anna Gatepost, I think Paul McCartney needs to hang up his microphone and pack it in. He's just like, he's, stop it, Paul. Stop it. We don't yeah. need it anymore, do we? <laughs> but, that's, but that's the old Thing about um, things being greater than the sum of their parts, aren't they? Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. it's like a lot of the solo stuff, it's all right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But it's not, it's not the chemistry that you get when they're all together. And you can say that about a lot of bands, really. You know, sometimes that chemistry is just it's the four of you in the room or however many yeah. and kind of the ideas that are being brought to the table, you know, and, and kind of like, I think if, if you get somebody that leaves a band and does their own stuff, I think a little bit of that's lost, you know, they could still be really talented songwriters, but you know, you're not getting that collective eye and that no. input of ideas. No, no, there's a few examples. And one springs to mind, I've obviously mentioned before the jam, the early jam, yeah. raw, raw talent, and then Incredible, Paul yeah. Weller goes off and does his own stuff, and I'm like, there's probably a couple of tracks I like from Paul Weller, but it's not the same as it's not they're just not the same. And hey, we we can't force them to be together for whatever reason. They decide they don't want to be in the band anymore, or you know they they're not getting on, or the, you know they're bored with it. But it's a shame when some of these these very talented individuals decide that they're going to break this amazing thing up and go and do their own thing. It's 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 terrible. Um, yeah. Janice has said, "If you're creative, you can't stop, no matter your age." Which is which is quite right, isn't it? You know, it's yeah. um, it's it is it's it's good. So it's um, right. So have we got any more questions? Come on, people, get some more questions on there. You know, it's not all about me and asking asking these uh, asking stuff. Is there anything you want to get out to your fans or people that f follow you? You know, because you can't speak to everyone every day, can you? Or when you've got a group of people. So yeah, I mean, I mean, I suppose. Um... 
it it's I suppose what people don't realise, right, is is the amount it takes behind the scenes. It's like everybody's got jobs. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And that that's what people kind of don't understand, I suppose, about um the independent scene. It's like everybody pretty much has got full time jobs and we're kind of juggling all this and i'm not i'm not sitting there to say woe is me like but I, I just um it's almost like a job on top of a job and it's a job that you love you know but it's uh yeah it's incredibly time consuming man um mm. but you know it's it's uh it's worth it it's worth it yeah i know what you mean because i do this and some other stuff this is virtually full time and uh yeah i could i'd be i'd be starving i wouldn't be able to put the lights on if it was this is paying me away but yeah. i love doing it and and even my wife said the other day she said you've you you must be very passionate about what you're doing with the station because you've just kept at it you've kept at it and we've had a few knocks and you've probably had knocks along the way where you think you know if you, you get to the point where you think oh screw this what why, why am i even doing this you know what's the point and then you realize why you're doing it in the first place don't you go right let's regroup and start again don't you? it's like the person said on twitter about creativity do you know what i mean you do, you can't not do that you know you can't it, it, it'd be like putting a blue bottle in a jar do you know what i mean you can't you can't just not create things um you just kind of some people just born that way, you know. Yeah. So uh, yeah, and whatever, whatever that takes to kind of get it out there is great. But I'm sure most musicians would say, "Well, I'd just be happy if I played it to a couple of people and they liked it." And and it's true that. But you know, anything else is a massive bonus. And doing stuff like this. I always have to kind of pinch myself a little bit, you know what I mean? That people might want to actually listen to our music and listen to what we've got to say. And that that's just like a beautiful thing, man. And I'm kind of, well, we're all grateful for that every day, really. Yeah. Well, you, you, you're you creative in your way, doing what you're doing. We're sat here as, I don't call myself a DJ, I'm a presenter. That's what I class myself as. Mm -hmm. uh, and listening to it, thinking, these guys are awesome. I want to talk to them. I want to get them out there. I want to... So that's, you know, that hunger you've got for creating things and being out. And uh, we, we're often the same. Well, do they really want to come on and chat to us? Well, they want to talk to us, which is fantastic. So uh, I think it's good we've got that, we've got, we've got that appreciation. And um, it's important, I think, for everyone, whether they're an artist or whatever they're doing, is to get, get the face out there and chat and talk. I think it's really important. I think the the yes you can create the music and speak to people and people will follow you but i think whatever you're doing and you need to be out there people need to listen to you and understand you and get to know you and i think it's it's really and i i believe that's why this is important that's why i want to do this to uh you know get bands like yourselves out there to you know people will come across this in months time and what have you and go well what's this all about so um what's she said um reference uh, the Mad Phoenix has said, uh, so speaking of talent and inspiration, uh, is there a singer that you'd love to have or collaborate with? Uh, which that's quite interesting. Would you like who would you like to collaborate with as a as a band? I think the talking bigger well, bands here. I suppose kind of like living or dead really. Um kind of I I mean, as a vocalist, I I, I think the most iconic person of the last what twenty years or so has got to be Amy Winehouse. I think she was just like a one-off man, a yeah. total and utter one-off. Um, and yeah, I think I don't think she will be surpassed for quite some time. Mm. Uh, musically, um, I I mean, kind of like alluded to the whole psychedelia thing. Um. I, I I love Jimi Hendrix, man. I love Jimi Hendrix. And I think kind of like um, do, doing something with Jimi Hendrix, unlikely though that is clearly, um, would be pretty amazing, really. Yeah. Um, I think that, that would be, um, yeah, that would be somewhere else, really. Yeah. So what what do you what do you guys do after a gig to chill out? Would you do, do you just kick back or do you just all get in your I'll own car? Straight and, after the gig. <laughs> and, bugger, and bugger off because you can't stand each. Get away! I'm going in my own car, race. Yeah, because it, it's hard when you've when you've done a gig, you must be on a high, you must be up here, even if you've played to a few people or thousands, you're up here, yeah. aren't you? Because I know it's like when I've done a show, I'm like, I have to go and chill out for ten minutes because I just like my head's buzzing. So what do you have to do to kick back? What, what? It kind of it it depends how far away it is really. I mean, if it's local, um, then we'll probably stay. Do you know what I mean? Have a few um, beers. Because I think it's important to talk to the people that have come to see you. Do you know that's really important. And you know, this, we're not like this sort of like 
level of independent music. It's not like we're little mix at the NEC, 200 yards away with like loads of security. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Um, and it's nice just to come down and have a bit of a beer with people um, and, and, and talk again about music, you know. So more often than not, we'll just end up staying and, and having a couple of beers with the people who've been to see us. And I think that's really, it's not just important. I, we enjoy it, you know, we enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. I mean, I went to a gig just before, not been to a gig for ages. I went to interview uh, someone before Christmas and ended up with some of the support acts chatting, and they yeah. and they spent all night with me, and it was absolutely brilliant. And you're right, that human interaction we we need that, and I, I think it's when a band gets yes, we all want to be big, and you'd you know massive stadium would be fantastic, and you you lose that uh, connection with you with you. That must be a even though it's great to get bigger and bigger, and bigger, it, you lose that intimacy that you've got with your initial, you know, fan base. Fan base, yeah, yeah. Which is, which yeah. is. Never... I mean, we we love that. I mean, talking about like going to see the Heavy North on Friday, you know, that's like a different thing. That's like going as a fan of that band. You know what I mean? And we just happen to be in a band, but that's just one of them. We're we're going because we really like them, and and it'll be good fun and it'll be a good night. And there'll be loads of other music fans there. Maybe another couple of local bands. It's just a bit of a really nice social thing in it, where everyone's got everything in common. Like so, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. That you'll enjoy that. It's be, be nice to be be there, not doing anything. It's like like me a lot of time when I go, I do lots of videos and lots of interviews, and then sometimes I just like to go somewhere, put my phone down, and not, not do anything. Uh, you know what I mean? yeah. Like, have you brought your camera it's with you? Have true, you, actually. Have you brought yeah. your camera with you doing any video? And I'm like, I can't be bothered. <laughs> just like yeah. I can't be bothered with it. Uh, Richard Oliver's it's a again. pretty different vibe to when you're playing and when you're not playing. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, de definitely, definitely. That's yeah, and and they'll probably appreciate. It. Do they know you're going there every north? Are you friends with them? Do they know? Yeah, uh, yeah. We put stuff on Twitter, like so. Yeah, it'll be good to meet them. Like, um, yeah, Kenny's old man. Um, he's a really good guy. Um, he's been a massive supporter of us from the start. So I think he's going to be there. So it'd be really good to have a chat cool. to him. Like, might drag um, you, might drag you up for ten minutes while they go off and have a brew or something. Sure, you never know. <laughs> you? you never know. You never know. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, right, which is your well out your tracks? Because we've played three now, haven't we? Um, what what should we what should what do you want to what what? Should, oh my God, I'll start again. What's your favourite then? Oh, we already played it. We're, um, we, well, that, that's we, really hard, isn't it? We, it's like choosing favourite kids, isn't it? Um, I, hate, I, I hate that. People say I've got no favourites. We all have favourites. They're trying to lie when they just say I've got. It's like me. I've got a favourite presenter, but I'm not going to tell everyone. It's Dan Evans. Let them work out for themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Right, uh, yeah. So we've got on here. We've got homecoming. Need you. We've played you. Need, need you more. We've played fireball. We've played the collaboration uh, with our Salford guy. So what have we got left? Uh, homecoming. The garden. We don't know. Yeah. Um, Darkness. Yeah. I, I suppose like bit of variety to what you've already played. Um, yeah. Why don't we? Why don't we try the garden? People like the drums on the garden. I like the guitar on the garden. It's mean. <laughs> Is that because you're playing it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, in the background, I'll do some air drumming. I can't drum, but I'll do a bit of air drumming. So anyway. Yeah, go for it, man. Look forward to it. <laughs> right. We'll come right back after this. It's the garden from Three Little Wolves. This is Dougie Stone Radio introducing. It's flicking the sound over to the other system. What's going on? Let's get it back. There you go. That's fair. Back to me. 
Johnny B in that. Love it. Brilliant that. Early keyboards. Wonderful. I like that keyboard effects. I like that. Anyway, uh, we're nearly out of time, but we've been talking to three little wolves. It's been wonderful to chat with you, man. I've really, really enjoyed it. It's been nice to uh been nice to get to know you, understand you a bit more. And um been good for man. Yeah, it's been good. Hey, what we're asking bands to do as well, so we've got to have an ID before you go, because we'd never get older afterwards. In a minute, can you can you do a this is you know the, the three little wolves and you're listening to Dougie Stone Raider. We'll put it on the station. Could you do that for it's us? A pleasure. <laughs> go. Hi, this is Three Little Wolves, and you're listening to Dougie Stone Radio. Perfect. Uh, last question for you. Do you sing? This is a ridiculous one. Do you sing in the shower? And if you do, what do you sing? <laughs> um, yeah, I think so. I kind of like, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 do you know, I've always kind of been making up stupid songs since I was about 10, I guess. So, yeah, I kind of sing quite a lot, really, probably to the irritation of others. Um, but... Can't be belting out a bit of Oasis, can you? That's always that's always a classic, mate. A I, classic choice, I think. I think you're right, and and you mentioned that at the start, and I think it's a good one to sort of uh, sort of wrap wrap up a little bit. That old Brit pop came along, and you had the blur. And why did we have to decide whether we like Blur or Oasis? Why can't we like both of them? But do you know what I mean? I was a Mancunian, listening to Oasis, and they just I just grabbed me straight away. I loved them, so I was Team Oasis all the way. I presume you was as well. I'm, 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 I'm presuming, but I kind of saw the benefits of both. Exactly. To be honest. Exactly. I'm a, I'm, I'm a classic Gemini man. Do you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, a little bit of Oasis, a little bit of Blur. It's all good. Excellent. Yeah, definitely, mate. Definitely. And um, f- from everyone here and the street team and uh, everyone that's tuned in, we, we, we thank you for your time. We wish you all the success you deserve. So that one day, hopefully, you can stop doing one job. And just focus on the one that you love, man. Uh-huh. That's that's the dream, isn't it? That's the dream. Got to be. Yeah, it's yeah. Be. Just just to be just to be able to live doing the thing that you love. I mean, who doesn't want that, man? Do you know what I mean? Of course, of course, it's the dream. That's the dream for everybody. But you know, if if all this was to end tomorrow, I'd look back and think I've been really lucky. We've been really lucky, and you've got to look at it that way too. 
But um, but yeah, of course, who doesn't want that? Exactly. But, um, thanks very much for having us on. And like, literally, I've got to say, kind of, your lady Janice has been really good, really supportive of us. Um, I just love what you are doing on this station. So uh, yeah, thanks. keep it going. Thanks, man. Set us more of it because it's great. Well, what we've done, I don't know. We 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 normally have an. I don't normally do an eighties and nineties mashup on a Thursday, and we've had a chat behind the scenes. Well, it's Jack blame Janice because she's our street team. She went, "Oi, Kirky boy, kick that into touch." We're having, an, we're having an indie show on the station. So from Thursday in March, we're going to be showcasing all the latest indie bands. We'll probably throw some of the classics in there, so just to keep people, you know what I mean, in, in tune with it. But we're ditching yeah. the 80s and 90s, and we're going all in with emerging artists as in the, from the indie scene. We want to create sort of a Dougie Stone Radio's take on the Hacienda back in the day. That's what we're creating. So that's what we're going to do. So Yeah, we'll that be... sounds like a winner, man. Yeah. It, is, it is. But anyway, I'm going to let you get on with your day. You have a great time and uh, good luck with your, with your next gig. Enjoy the heavy north. Say hello to us from Dougie Stone Radio. We want them on the station for a natter when they get five minutes. And so uh, if I can twist their arm. <laughs> yeah, just say, hey, we're going to twist your melons, man. We want you on Dougie Stone Radio. The, uh, the sound, get on there. Yeah, nice one. Take care, Kirk. Thanks for having us on. Thanks, man. Speak to you soon. So, Bye. See ya. That was uh, that's three little wolves, people. Three little wolves on Dougie Stone introducing and twisting my melons, man. Yeah, I had to throw the classics in there, didn't we? Which we did have to do the. Uh, where is it? Let me find the jingle that I got off Richard because it's a classic one. It's a classic. A one. Mancunian classic. Yeah, we're out of it. Uh, go and follow the band. Keep in touch with Dougie Stone Radio. This is part of our introducing. We'll be bringing you more and more bands as we as we get chatting with them. Thanks for the street team. Thanks for everyone's comments today. And if you find this in the future, come and find us. Just say Alexa, open internet radio, or go to DougieStoneRadio.com. Press the player. We're on Mixcloud streaming as well, so go and check us out there. Until next time, I'm out of here. Oh, yeah.